unprecedented jazz link season and all in all I hope that you've managed to stay motivated to keep practicing playing and progressing toward the mastery of your instrument and perhaps beyond your instrument uh, to grasp a little bit of knowledge about the piano and the series that I've uh, presented and that is for those of you who don't consider yourselves to be pianists per se Besides, beyond the specificity of our individual instruments, we're all simply musicians. James Brown taught us that the drum is every instrument. Every instrument is a drum. And piano itself is classified as a percussion instrument. And yet, with its full polyphonic range, the piano is essentially every instrument. And as such, an entire symphony can be condensed down to a piano reduction. And as complex as that sounds, the truth is that many symphonies start off as a simple piano sketch. And so we can reverse engineer that pretty easily, right? Now I imagine that many of you have reached a certain level of proficiency on your instrument and you're ready, especially over this summer, to try to get to that next level whatever that means for you. Maybe you have a desire to create your own music uh, or to do music arrangements of jazz standards or perhaps uh, arrangements of, of pop tunes uh, in a jazz style. And so again, I reiterate and restate often that Dizzy Gillespie encouraged a young Miles Davis to learn piano as a way to uh, see your horn from a broader perspective. And you may remember my mentioning that my band teacher told me the same thing. And subsequently, I evolved from playing trombone and other brass instruments to gain proficiency on the piano. I also later learned from an arranging instructor that if your ideas sound harmonically correct on the piano, and you transcribe that for your ensemble, then it's absolutely going to sound correct when it's played by your group, whether it's a big band or, or a symphony orchestra. Now, in my previous sessions, I've, um, I've focused on giving all instrumentalists a basic foundation in the piano, with the theory and the, and the technique using the five-finger position. And that with a relatively simplified parallel fourth exercise, if you remember, that opens up your ear and your, your tactile memory to the feel of a 2-5-1 progression in all 12 keys. On the right hand, starting on G and C, going to move the bottom note down a half step, top note down a half step, bottom note, top note. Bottom note, top note, bottom note, top note, bottom and top, bottom note, top note, bottom note, top note, bottom, got the feel of it, yes. Top note, bottom note, top. And we're about to, to return to where we began. Now, the left hand will play A and D. A flat, D flat. So you're going down in half steps in parallel fourths. G flat to B, F, to B flat, down a half step, 
B to A. And keep in mind that this is 2, 5, at least from the perspective that we're looking from. It's 2 and 5. Now, the left hand will play A and D. The right hand starting on G and C. Hand, bottom note down, top note down. Bottom note down, top note down. Bottom note down, top note down. Bottom note, top note. And if you can just train your left hand to stay in the parallel fourth position each time you move it down so that you add, automatically get the feel of that parallel fourth in the juxtaposition of the distance between the notes that comprise the fourth interval. So, so from A to D, set four from A flat, and so on. And then I shared the basic improvisational patterns inside the a D minor melodic modal scale system, utilizing all the white keys on the piano, starting with D. Now, if you, you've not explored those sessions, I always encourage you to go back and see those. And, or if you did, you still might want to go back and revisit them in order to integrate the lessons into one whole interconnected continuum that you can build upon even with those other lessons that you've learned from other instructors. Uh, so today I felt it important to leave you with some fundamental historical knowledge that will help to ground your practice based on the roots of the music. Now you've heard over and over again that blues is the root of jazz and that the core of blues is the spiritual sung by what I call human trafficking victims that were brought to this continent from West Africa. Now what does it really mean in terms of the specific characteristics of those spiritual songs that evolved into this secular expression that we call the blues? Now one other thing to consider is that Probably about 90% of these human trafficking captives were actually teenagers when they arrived in, on this continent. And the fact is, they arrived here as musicians and as artists and who played drums and string instruments and woodwinds as part of their traditions and cultures and lineages. And so not only were they proficient as players, but they were also expert crafters of the instruments. And uh, as you know, that uh, they are credited with the creation of the banjo and the bagpipes, <laughs> of all things. And of course, these two instruments in particular are not widely acknowledged as being associated with West African cultural origins, but in fact they are. In my summer jazz camp presentation, I go back to the first known mallet instrument, the balafon. And I found this to be a precursor of the portative organ. This is the first keyboard instrument. And that led to the clavichord, which led to the development of the harpsichord and eventually the pianoforte in Italy by an Italian manufacturer or the piano builder. The original mallet keyboard and keyboard instruments only had seven tones based on the five notes of the pentatonic scale plus two. And pente in Greek means five, of course, and think of pentagon or five-sided structures, and yes, five fingers on any given five keys. The pentatonic scale is the literal glue that connects all of the music of every culture around the world, from Asia to Africa. And it's absolutely the most ancient of all scale systems. 
For example, the spiritual Amazing Grace, written sometime in the 1800s, is played with the five notes of the pentatonic scale. So let's look at that melody starting on the D flat. The entire melody is played on five black keys of the piano. Now thousands of blues melodies are based on this scale and with the addition of the two note variations that expanded into the minor melodic scale system, let's explore for a moment the relationships between the intervals that make up the pentatonic scale. So starting once again on C sharp, five finger position, five black keys. So you have D flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, and B flat. So let's look at the distance or the intervals between each of these notes. So here, between the D flat and the E flat, there's whole step. And a simple way to, to ascertain a whole step is just that there's one note in between the two notes. So between these two notes is that note. Now between the next black note and the third black note, there's more space. There's two notes in between. And so this interval is um, a, from here to here is a half step, from here to here is a whole step, from here to here is a step and a half. And that is technically a minor third up. So let's just say that you have between these two notes a whole, a whole step, between these two notes a minor third, between these two notes, a whole step. And between these two notes, again, a whole step. So the minor third is the only uh, interval in there that's, that's not a whole step. So now, using that formula, you can go up a half step, for example, and you've got the same rule. You've got two. You've got two notes that are a whole step. You have two notes that are a step and a half or a minor third. Whole step, whole step. So you've got a, these pentatonic scales of five notes. Now, if we are limiting ourselves to five notes, then we have to become more inventive in terms of ryth rhythmic possibilities because we're limited in the amount of notes we can play, so we've got to do more things with the rhythm. So let's just start with two notes, and you can repeat the patterns I play, or you can respond to the things that I'm playing, as long as you're using any of the five black notes on the piano. Two notes only. You're going to solo on two notes. So now let's exp expand to three notes.
expand to five notes. tritone from F. The, the composition of Afro Blue uh, actually uses these seven notes. And again, you can play along, but restrict yourself to these seven notes. sessions and as much as I've enjoyed presenting them to you. Have a, an enjoyable and safe summer and we look forward to seeing you during the next Jazz Link season. For those of you who are going off to college, congratulations and we look forward to great things from you. Bye for now.
Thank you.